So what is ResNet 50? If you go online, it's pretty much gibberish. People keep regurgitating the same thing over and over, which suggests, beside the authors and very few exceptions, they don't really understand how this works. You don't find that suspicious. And since you are not most people, because while you're watching this, I'm going to explain to you exactly how this works. You have my undivided attention. Let's get started. Key concepts to understand first. What is a neural network? Say you want the computer to classify based on certain external things you watch, if the car is a Lambo or a truck. The output is Lambo or truck. So when you provide a picture of either, you want it to figure it out by the things it watches. So what are the things it watches? Well, it can be width, length, color, design aspects, tire size, and so on. These are the features, but you don't tell it these. These are derived from the raw data. The computer does this by itself. Neural networks classify data based on features derived from the input data rather than predefined characteristics. And since the computer doesn't know which one is which, it starts off with randomly assigned weights for each feature. So say something like this. It will train on this information, but it needs to know the correct answers as it is training. So say we start with a Lambo picture. The computer doesn't know which one is which. So when it goes through it in its first forward pass, it will calculate some weights and biases in the end. And then it sees the correct picture. Don't, 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 don't. And my dude is like, okay, so we are off by this much, the error or bias, same thing. So it does a backward pass and makes the weight corrections for that output, with the whole purpose of minimizing the error. As you keep feeding it more pictures with the correct assigned labels, at one point, it will get the weights for each feature that are close to the correct ones, as it keeps reducing the error. So whenever you feed it a picture, given the weights and biases it has assigned to each layer and its error, it will be more on point. So it uses the pictures you have in the training set, typically 80% of it, and has the remaining 20% part of the picture reserved as a test set. We can also have, like we did in the banknote authentication video, a validation set where these are completely unseen pictures so we can remove any biases from the training test processes of that initial data set. Backpropagation and backward pass. Backpropagation is the calculation of the loss function derivatives in that layer. Backward pass is all the backpropagation calculation from the end to the beginning of that epoch. It's specifically about adjusting weights based on the loss calculated after the fourth pass. How'd you guys get in here? Visiting hours are over. Special treatment. Epochs and batches. One go through the whole network, forward and backwards, it's called an epoch. But instead of going through the whole thing at once, it goes in smaller chunks, called batches. Batches are the sample size you take from your training set. Say you have 100 pictures of the Lambo and define a batch of 10. It will take 10 random pictures from your training set for one epoch. Look, Fuzz, I got the buzz. This meeting is adjourned. So, one epoch is one forward and backwards pass through all the 100 batches, although it does a forward and backwards pass through randomly selected chunks of 10. Activation function. The activated function transforms the weighted sum of inputs into a non-linear output value. One of the most used ones is ReLU. It deliberately introduces non-linearity to allow the function to be more generalized. The key here is to be able to grab other values that wouldn't be caught if it was always a linear relationship. This is used in the hidden layers. Bruh. Softmax. It is used in the output layers. It converts the output in probabilities between 0 and 1. Bruh. Math behind neural networks. As for math, one neuron, we have this expression, note the bias or error term, and we have the activation function. But since we have multiple inputs, it's the same idea but with many of them. Instead of layers, think vectors. Neural networks, one input, one hidden layer, one output layer. Deep neural networks, one input layer, multiple hidden layers, 
one output layer, hidden layers. This refers to the layers between the input and output layers. Whenever you see or hear layers, think vectors and an engine. One, you have the input vectors. Two, hidden vectors inside the engine. Three, output vectors outside the engine. For the most part, the more hidden layers, the better, as you will be able to do, in theory, capture more patterns. Cross entropy. Entropy is a measure of randomness. From information theory, which is math theory applied to computers, here specifically we are referring to a measure of how two different probability distributions are. We want to quantify the difference between the predicted probability distribution and the true distribution. Lower is better. So cross entropy is used to define the loss function. This is sometimes referred to as log loss as well. Vanishing exploding gradient problem. How can you calculate a solution unless you understand that first you have to deal with a problem? Anyways, let's continue. If you want to provide as many features as possible so that the neural network can do its thing, you would think that by having a bunch of layers would be a good thing. It turns out that yes, but with caution. Here's why. In the beginning, we do the first forward pass. The model weights, or parameters, are initialized randomly. After passing through all the layers, the network outputs a prediction. After the first forward pass, a loss, or error, is computing, comparing the true label to the predicted one. We do our first backward pass, computing the loss with respect to the model weights, by calculating the gradient. The gradient is a vector that contains all the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to each parameter. So here, to be clear, we are doing the partial derivatives of the loss function. Why derivatives? Because we are looking to minimize the loss function. Then the model weights are updated. New weight equals old weight minus learning rate times the gradient. Learning rate is a hyperparameter. It can be adjusted to improve the model. There are a couple of methods like grid search, random search or Bayesian optimization where you specify a bunch of learning rates and it tests those out. One used here is Adam from Adaptive Moment Estimation. It is an optimization method in machine learning. It adapts the learning rate for each parameter to improve convergence. So here in the vanishing exploding gradient problem is where normalization techniques such as batch normalization and architecture choices to introduce non-linearity like ReLU come into play. What is a CNN? Instead of fully connecting all the neurons like traditional neural networks, CNNs use filters, also called kernels, to scan the input. These filters are smaller matrices that slide over the image and create feature maps. In this manner, they detect local patterns in the data, like shapes, objects and so on. Each time you shift the window is called a stride. CNNs often downsample the spatial dimensions of the input using what's called pooling layers. With these concepts out of the way, let's get to the ResNet50. What does it do? ResNet50 classifies images, one object at a time. It can do multiple classification in one image, but single classification is its core string. This is John, this is Robert. So we use ResNet50 for image classification, what we are about to do in this video. What is it? ResNet50 means residual network with 50 layers. One input vector, 48 hidden ones, one output vector. It's called ResNet because it's part of their residual network family of neural networks, using the concept of residual block. It is a deep convolution neural network, CNN, so deep because we have more than one given layer, convolutional because it uses a kernel that passes through the image to find patterns, to extract features. ResNet50 is pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset, which contains 1,000 diverse object categories. This brings us to the concept of transfer learning. Pre-training on ImageNet allows ResNet50 to learn general features that are useful for many image classification tasks. It brings in previous knowledge, meaning pre-trained weights where the model can be fine-tuned for specific tasks 
with much less data and training time. Think of it like this. It already has an idea of what it's looking for. It just doesn't have specifics yet. About the residual plot, why is that? ResNet 50 is designed to address the problem of vanishing gradients. How does it do that? In common CNNs, each layer learns a new transformation from the input and passes it forward. In residual blocks, instead of a full transformation, it learns a small change residual. It introduces the concept of skip connection, allowing the input to bypass one or more layers when these are not relevant to the current rates it already has in the model. It uses the concept of direct path for gradient flow. In a standard deep network, gradients must flow through every layer during backpropagation. With residual connections, there's a direct path for gradients to flow backwards through the network. This direct path helps prevent the gradient from becoming too small, vanishing, as it propagates through many layers. About its architecture. Contrary to statistics where we have residual equals observed minus expected value, here residual means the leftover information the network learns. About the model math, instead of output equals fx, here we have output equals fx plus x, where x is the input from a previous layer. fx is the learned transformation by the residual block, the small change the network is running. It is also called residual mapping. So fx plus x is the final output. If the layer doesn't learn anything useful, say fx is close to zero, the input is passed. If it learns something, fx modifies the input. This makes it easier for the network to maintain performance, even as depth increases. You good? So, ResNet 50, good for image classification tasks. It uses a bunch of hidden layers and has a method of skipping irrelevant ones to produce a better model than standard CNNs.